Yo, what's good YouTube? Sam Crow here, aka Scoop, back with the Pokemon Battle Federation Season 8 Finals. We've got the finals here, and this is like like it has been all season, a little cup league. So we've got some nice uh, uh, some nice little cup action going on here. And we've got the Portland Polywags who have finished. So the Portland Polywags come in with a zero and one record taken over for Spazzy Platt and his Friday Harbor Zangus. So Bronson comes in and takes over as the Portland Polywags. Has a loss to start out with. Um, and he actually started, he, he started the league off with a win of his own, but in terms of chronological order, week one and two, his week two match, which would be his first official match in the PBF with, uh, for season eight, was a loss too. So he started out with an 0-2 record and won five straight to make playoffs. And he grabbed, uh, he almost grabbed the second seed, uh, was really, really close to that, but Triple A did grab that. However, Portland went through round one, defeated St. Kilda, aka Bacon, defeated Triple A in the semifinals that I uploaded. And now he's facing off against the E-Town Escavaliers, as you see on the right-hand side of the screen, coached by Ginger, who uh, he actually lost three of his first five battles this season, but he finished the season on a two-game win streak. So he ended up finishing four and three, and he got one of the bottom three, four, five, six seeds or something like that, and got into the playoffs as well. Defeated Pittsburgh, who he had lost to earlier in the season, so he rectified that loss. And then he got, and then I had a bye round, and then me and E Town Ginger were set for the semifinals, and he defeated us as well. So he's definitely deserving of his position here. He's got four straight wins going into the finals here. Uh, Bronson's got um, seven straight wins going into the finals here. So it's a really nice match. And has some an interesting storyline which we're going to talk about. So what makes this finals match so intriguing is both finalists had the number one and number two ranked Pokemon in the league MVP race with Bulby and Dwebble. Bulby barely edged out Dwebble in the votes. Um, Bulby had more impressive offensive stats, but I do believe that Bul excuse me, Dwebble had. I'm pretty sure. I'm not sure what I just said. So let me recap on that. Dwebble had more impressive offensive stats, but Bulby was more of a glue to its team. I think uh, I think it performed offensive and defensive roles phenomenally, um, basically all season, and was the reason that it was named MVP. So we've got the number one and number two teams in the league, not necessarily by record, but if you make it to the finals, the two finalists are the number one and the number two teams in the league. And then you've got the number one and the number two Pokemon in terms of value in the league. So Little Cup's been fantastic. These two Little Cup mines and Tyrant even have put in the work. All three deserving to be in the semifinals, but only two deserving to be in the finals, being Bolo B and Dwebble. So it intensifies. Okay, so we've got some on screen. Well, we've got some uh, screenshots here from Discord where we, where the main chat for our server is and the league and whatnot. So we've got Bronson and Ginger here, both of the finalists, arguing about the MVP and who actually deserved it more. Um, lots of, lots of different things here. I'm not going to walk through it all. It's all here on screen. You can go to the Pokemon Battle Federation at underscore official underscore PBF on Twitter and uh, check this thread out. It goes with the league MVP thread. Uh, post that I started just a few seconds ago and uh, yeah basically they just argue about who's going to win the finals what each mon is going to do in the finals so on and so forth until one of the guys are going to be uh, crowned and we uh, we tweeted it out live so if anybody caught it live you've already seen the results but here we are we're going to hop into it and uh, we'll be right back okay so as you can see this isn't normally how I do um, battles between my friends I don't normally post commentate but I did a live recording and it was butchered uh, more than once <laughs> it was butchered more than once like uh, I was able to uh, I, first of all I butchered it but I was able to recover it 
and then was re-edited in it, butchered it again, and lost it um, completely. It was a corrupted file, and now it's. Uh, I try to go through the process of brand, you know recovering it as well, but it's completely gone. So I'm here with some post commentary. It's not going to be as exciting as some of my reactions were in the battle um, to some certain sets and certain things that happened, but nonetheless, felt like uh, felt like. I could uh, still bring some enthusiasm to the finals here, and uh, we could watch it together at least. So I'm going to play it, I'm not going to pause it, I'm going to play it, I'm not going to pause it, and we're going to see what's going to happen here. I think, um, well I'll talk about their leads, so well, I'll talk about team, pre I'll talk about their whole roster real quick, and then I'll talk about team preview a little bit too, uh, just so that, uh, I guess if you're not a Little Cup fan, you, you might not even watch it, but if you do watch it and you're not a little bit fan, maybe you get some insight from this uh, this little team preview segment here that I'm going to talk about both of their teams. So, um, Big Tut, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, is, coach, is Ginger, coach of the E-Town of Cavaliers. He has a squad of Volby, Bronzer, Chimchar, Flabibi, Anareth, Vol, uh, Voltorb, Jangmo'o, Bunnery, Muna, and the Alolan Diglett. And Bronson, coach of the Portland Polywags on the opposing side of the screen, has the Mean Food, the Chin Chow, Feral Seed, Bunnelby, Chinglin, Dwebel, Electric, Purloin, Noibat, and the Fampy. So, uh, I had both of these guys send me their, uh, their squads beforehand so that I had some kind of insight when I was live commentating the battles and stuff. So, I knew, their, I knew both of their squads and stuff. Um, unfortunately, I've forgotten it since then. I know a little bit. I know both of them had some trick room variants and stuff like that. And I know Bronson's rocking two Scarfers to accommodate for the speed that Ginger has on his squad. Ginger has a very, very fast team, and he's brought three, actually four potential stealth rockers in Chimchar, Anareth, Diglett, and the Bronzor. And then Bronson has two potential stealth rockers, being Dwebble and Feral Seed. Um, where if one is rocks, the other could be spikes, or both of them could be rock spikes to make sure that he keeps his hazards up. Or Dwebble could be a setup variant as well. Uh, but it's a little bit less likely, likely in this matchup in particular. Um, so I guess leads, Chim Charge a fine, uh, anything with fake out's a fine lead, but then maybe Bronson has something like Protect. He also has a uh, Feral Seed, so you don't want to necessarily lead with something just to click fake out versus the Feral Seed. So he could lead with the Chim Char. Um, I guess the Chin Chow is a nice lead for Bronson to bolt switch out because I don't think uh, an Alolan Diglett would hard switch into a potential water move or something like that. So yeah, just looking at team preview, if I if I were both of these guys, I, if I was uh, if I was Ginger, I would probably lead Chim Char, and if I was Portland, I would probably lead with the Chin Chow. Probably. <laughs> But uh, let's see what they're going to lead with. So the Chimchar does come out and the Dwebble comes out. So it'll be interesting to see here. Bronson does carry the fake out and he's able to um, avoid, excuse me, he carries the protect and is able to avoid the fake out. But the Chimchar just U-turns out into the bronzer where it's going to get its item knocked off as it sets up the trick room. And Dwebble is packing the protect so it's going to waste a turn of trick room here. And then it's going to hard switch out into the feral seed. Takes the flash cannon pretty comfortably. Hard switches back out into the Dwebel because he knows the hidden power fire is probably coming. And it this prompts his berry juice to pop. So he's able to uh, avoid being knocked out and he gets another trick room turn. Like he wasted all those trick room turns and is able to get up a layer of spikes and rocks as well. So that's really nice for Bronson. Despite being down a mon at this point, he's able to bring in Feral Seed and it outspeeds under trick room and is able to knock this bad boy out, which is actually pretty interesting. And now it's going for the Z Continental Crush here, where it barely misses out on the knockout. I'm pretty, I'm not sure if that was a roll, but that was pretty close to being a knockout there. And uh, yeah, the Chimchar goes down, or excuse me, the Chimchar knocks out the Feral Seed and then goes down to the Chingling. So not bad to see a little bit of uh, some, some I, like I don't think I saw Chingling to go to even be brought to a battle this season. So that was nice to see. And uh, Bronze were putting in the work with the Trick Room and the Hidden Power Fire. That was pretty nice. So here we're at 4-4, four, four, which is a pretty nice position uh, for both players at this point. Um, it look, it's looking like it could go either way at this point still. 
to the viewers, I suppose. And he gets his item knocked off here, and it's it's a berry juice. It's not going to pop because it gets completely knocked out on the same turn. And now the man, uh, the man who sets up a bulk up as this Bullaby goes for the Brave Bird and barely lives the Drain Punch on 20%, which which was a roll from Mike Elks uh, based on their sets. And the Bullaby is going to be able to knock out the man who. This thing is choice. He's got two choice scarfers left. Bronson does, and he's able to catch him here. Catch the Volibee here with some Volt Switch Spam. Now goes into the uh, Chin Chow, and fires off a Hydro Pump, which lands versus the Anorith. But Diglett reveals to be Choice Scarf as well, so it's going to come through here with a nice little Earthquake Earthquake Sweep versus the two Electric Scarfers. So it's a really really fun game. Uh, nice fast pace and offensive. Um, interesting, interesting to see Dwebel come as a support mon and not a uh, not an offensive shell smash variant or anything like that. Bunnery and Alolan Diglett has put in the work in the playoffs. Uh, and they deserve to be the last two standing, in my opinion. So it's been a really, really good. Uh, it was a really, really good game. It was a really, really fun season. The Little Cup was phenomenal. I'm um, gonna have to talk to the guys running to this every few seasons or so. At least every three seasons, gonna have to have a Little Cup season in there somewhere. And uh, yeah, it's going to be it. Um, Bullaby finishes the season with 15 knockouts and 7 feints. Um, Dwebble finishes with 21 knockouts and 6 feints. And I think it would be important to note that the E-Town Escavaliers finish with a 7-3 and three record with a plus 13 differential and the 8th Iwata Cup. So they've won the title. Bronson also finished seven and three, so the same record, and just lacked um, three points of differential as well. So that's really nice. Two seven and three teams at the top. Really cool to see. Um, good game to both players. It was very fun to watch you guys this season, and I hope you guys enjoy it as well. Hope you guys come back for future seasons, so on and so forth. And thanks to everyone in the league and anybody that you know watches the league, so on and so forth. My content, Andy's content. Um, and then just the PBF content all together. Let me know what you thought about the prep and plays on both sides of the field. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe. All the good stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.